Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections. Now, in this installment, we're going to be doing what we do pretty much every week, which is a special show on the upcoming UFC card this weekend. Now, I know in the last couple of weeks, we ended up doing a money line parlay. We've kind of alternated formats because the overall cards have, let's be real, have not been that appealing from a betting perspective. So we have gone the money line parlay route. We're undefeated with those. Overall, UFC has been very good. But for the sake of this card, I actually like several fights. We're going to be going back to what we did a couple weekends ago which was going through several plays that I have on multiple fights. And without further ado, we're going to be diving right in with the first play. It's going to be in a matchup between Aspinall and Bedeau. Now, in this fight, we're going to be taking a kind of a special prop here on FanDuel. It's going to be either fighter to win by first-round knockout at plus 100 on FanDuel. A couple reasons why I like this prop. First of all, both fighters definitely specialize in the knockout department. I think that will carry over in this heavyweight contest. Aspinall made his UFC debut. Uh, back in late May, and he absolutely just destroyed Jay Collier as he ended up winning by knockout in 45 seconds. He was fantastic. He should end up being a potentially serious contender in the heavyweight division in most likely a year or so. But either or, his opponent in this fight, Alan Badeau, usually fights at light heavyweight at 205. Now he's going to be fighting at roughly 250 or so. So I am a little bit concerned with the added weight he's putting on and how well that'll translate for him. But if you look at his performances, Badeau has won seven of his eight fights by knockout. He's a knockout artist. Aspinall at the same time has won seven of his eight fights also by knockout. So both fighters tend to end fights extremely quickly. Aspinall has made it into the second round just twice his entire career. And he has won each of his last four fights by first round knockout. So Aspinall's looking for blood early, and I think he will probably get it. But Badeau, out of his nine fights, it is worth mentioning that six of them have ended in the first round by either knockout victory or knockout defeat. And I simply think that Aspinall should be able to take care of business here early. There is a chance, though, that Badeau, who does possess a lot of power, is going to be able to clip him. So for that reason, I simply think this fight will end within the first five minutes. Both fighters are going to be swinging. I think Aspinall with his leg kicks could win a variety of ways, could either win by a straight, which he has the ability to put anybody on his, on his back, or win by leg kicks and to potentially break uh, Badeau's leg just by constant punishment to the legs, which he's done before. Overall, first round knockout by either fighter, plus 100 on Fandle, definitely a great start to the card at a plus price. Now, the second play is going to be on a guy that we actually backed a couple weeks ago uh, on the money line parlay. And he's actually going to be fighting again. And it's going to be on Impa Kasangane. And we ended up taking him against Patolo uh, a couple of weekends ago. Uh, Impa's still undefeated, 8-0, very solid fighter. He's going up against Bunkley in this matchup. Bunkley, not very good. Truth is, he's probably not even deserving of a UFC spot. He only got a contract because they wanted to find somebody for Kevin Holland to fight. Kevin Holland was supposed to fight on the main card the week prior but his opponent ended up passing out backstage and they had to cancel the fight entirely. So Buckley was signed and they simply threw him against Holland in the following weekend and Holland naturally took his head off as he ended up winning by third round knockout after Bunkley only had a week of preparation. Bunkley was only put in for the Holland fight. They, however, they couldn't cut him after taking a fight on seven days notice. This is kind of the makeup fight where they are going to give him another shot to prove his worth the issue here is that Bunkley usually fight, Buckley usually fights at welterweight at 170. Impa usually fights at middleweight at 185. And this fight is going to be at middleweight, which definitely suits Kasangani's uh, fighting style and definitely is, assists his chances in this fight. Plus, Kasangani is undefeated. He is 8-0 with six of those wins by decision. So Buckley's reward for getting knocked out by a solid fighter is getting a, another solid fighter who's undefeated in a different weight class. So yeah, Buckley is not exactly being set up for success here. And even though he ended up getting knocked out in his last fight by Holland, Impa does have power, but I am going to take Impa by his preferred method of decision. And I will take him by decision at plus 110 on bet online. Simply put, massive class disadvantage here for uh, Buckley. Impa is a very solid fighter, could be a potential contender in the future. But at the end of the day, I'm getting this guy by his preferred outcome at plus 110 against a far inferior fighter. And it's a very good deal. And that is going to take us to our third play, which is going to be a two-pick parlay. There's not going to be a full money line parlay, though. Uh, it's going to be for a one, one and a quarter units, and this parlay pays out at minus 125. 
first pick, we're going to be doubling up on Kasangane. We're going to be taking him on the money line. It's kind of a fail-safe in case the decision does not work out. There is a chance maybe Impa can win by stoppage. Buckley's pretty tough. Uh, he got smacked around for a couple rounds before getting decapitated in the third round, but he definitely showed he can take a punch. And Impa does love the decision, but Impa overall is just a better overall fighter. He's going to win this fight. I don't really see Buckley having much of a shot. I think that this line is a little bit too cheap for me. That's going to be the first pick in this two-pick parlay. And the second pick is going to be on a matchup in the heavyweight division between Nasciamento and Doukas. And we're going to be going with under two and a half rounds, which is available at roughly minus 400 on Fox. But so really, really heavy chalk here. But there's a good reason for it. Uh, Nasciamento, if there's one way to describe him as a heavyweight, it is a finisher. He has been in eight fights. And every fight he has been in has ended in either the first or the second round. He's won each of the last four fights by submission. The guy is an up-and-comer. He's going to be very good. And I think that this is a very good spot for him to potentially win very early in the first round. His opponent in this fight is going to be part-time police officer uh, Chris Daukas fighting out of Philadelphia. And he is a 9-3 and three in his MMA career. He won his UFC debut by knockout as he ended up knocking out Parker Porter uh, in the first round. Uh, back in mid-August. So a little bit of an early turnaround for him there. But simply put, Daukas has the power to win by knockout. Uh, he definitely has the speed. He did lose some weight. He was a little bit overweight for his last fight, ended up losing some weight, which is a very good sign for him because it shows that he needed, or he at least realized the importance of getting back in shape, which he did. And simply put, Daukas can clip Nascimento to win by knockout. That is definitely possible. Meanwhile, uh, Nascimento, if he ends up taking Daukas down at any point in this fight, it's over. Daukas does not have much of a submission defense, and Nascimento has won six of his eight fights by submission. So th- if this goes to the ground, it's over. Daukas is getting put out, and there is a chance Daukas could clip Nascimento and win by knockout as well. So for that reason, under two and a half rounds, both of them also don't have much of a gas tank. I think this fight will end within the first round or so. Two and a half just to be safe for a two pick here. Uh, once again, Tupic parlay, Kasangane, Moneyline, and Daukas under two and a half rounds in his fight. And that pays out a minus 125 on the Tupic at Fox Bet. And the last play that I'm going to be going with here on the UFC Fight Night 179 card is going to be on a matchup between uh, Ben Rothwell and Marcin Tybura. And for this fight, we're going to be going with the underdog here. Rothwell is favored, which I find a little bit questionable. We're going to be taking a prop preferred outcome. We're going to be going with Tybura to win by decision at plus 275 on Fox bet. A couple reasons why. First of all, Rothwell, even though he has won each of the last two fights, does not really look that impressive in those two fights. He beat Steven Struff by knockout, very controversial knockout. He was getting absolutely destroyed by Struff for the first round and a half. Ended up hitting Struff with two illegal groin shots, which caused Struff to hit the mat in pain for about 10 minutes. The ref tried to talk Struff into continuing fighting. Struff did clearly was damaged from the groin shots, and then Struff ended up getting knocked out roughly a minute later. So that was a little bit fluky. And then the last fight he had against Olivia, uh, against uh, Ovin St. Pru really didn't look great, won by split decision. Uh, St. Pru didn't do much. It was his first fight at heavyweight, definitely struggled in the fight. But St. Pru did rock Rothwell twice in the last 10 seconds of rounds two and three, and unfortunately it was too little too late for St. Pru, and Rothwell got the win. But Rothwell is still two and three in his last five, and those two wins are really not that impressive. So I'm a little bit surprised that he is the favorite for this contest. Meanwhile, Tybura, looking at his recent performances, he has been very good lately. Now, he is not exactly an entertaining fighter by any means, but he definitely gets results, and I think he should be able to do enough to get the job done here. Each of the last two fights have been decision victories, as Tybura was able to manhandle Grishin in his last fight before – also handling Spivak in the fight prior. Each of Tybura's last four victories have come by decision, so he has done really well in decisions lately, and he is a pretty boring wrestler at this stage in his career, but he's very effective. He's the kind of guy who will simply take you down in the first minute of a round and then sit on you for four four more minutes and win the round 10-9. That's what he does. It's what he's going to do. Rothwell is, has decent takedown defense, but Tybura has very good stamina, and he is relentless when it comes to going for takedowns. If he goes for a takedown and misses three times in a row, you better believe he's going to go for the fourth time in a row. And I think eventually Tybura will get one takedown per round, and I think Tybura will be able to do enough in order to keep Rothwell on the ground while not doing enough to actually stop the fight. Rothwell 
is a pretty tough dude. He's lost 12 times in his career, but six of them have been by decision. He's been submitted twice. He's lost four times by knockout. But when half of your losses come by decision, it means you're a pretty tough guy, and it is three rounds only. I think Tybura will win. I think he will take Rothwell down and dominate on the ground. But I do think Rothwell will be able to hold on for these 15 minutes to lose by decision. And I think that Tybura, even if you are a little bit scared of taking him to win by decision on the prop, I think him on the money line as an underdog is a very solid play. But at plus 275 on Fox Bet, definitely worth the deal. So once again, just to, to recap all the plays I have for UFC Fight Night 179, I like Aspinall and Badeau. That fight to end by first round knockout by either fighter at plus 100 on FanDuel. I like Kasangane to win by decision at plus 110 on Bet Online. Two pick parlay here. I like Kasangane money line and Doukas under two and a half rounds, which pays out at minus 125 on Fox Bet. And last but not least, I like Tybura to win by decision at plus 275 on Fox Bet. Other than that, though, that's been an installment of Scott Selections here for the upcoming UFC card this weekend. Good luck to all of you and your respective best today. Bye, everyone.